Okay, so uh, previously in Tyranny of Dragons, your journey started at Greenest, a small community southeast of Baldur's Gate. The town's healer asked you to investigate the old winery just north of town, a task that led to the discovery of a large-scale cult of the dragon operation to raid and loot settlements of the Sword Coast in order to create a treasure hoard large enough uh, for a dragon. Joining forces with a blue dragon named Lenithan, you agreed to travel to Baldur's Gate and find out where all this treasure is headed. The dragon's spies are numerous, but so far they failed in learning the destination of the treasure or its purpose. A series of events took you through the plain of Acheron and from there to the dungeons under Helm's shield hall, uh, shield hall in El Turel where you freed your friend from a demonic possession and, along the way, looted the vaults of the temple. After escaping the temple guards, you helped Roscoe overcome a halfling assassin that was set on killing him. Uh, this halfling was a sickly, delusional member of his own clan. <clears throat> One of Lenithan's spies helped you slip out of Elturel's gate, after which you traveled west toward uh, Baldur's Gate, meeting refugees from recent raids along the way. A family of farmers offered you to spend the night in their camp. Um, Roscoe, relative mutterings and coughs were the only noise disturbing what could have been a pleasant night, one of the few remaining before winter takes over uh, the land. So uh, here we are, um, still with Haim and Leica, um, husband and wife, farmers heading to El Turel. So, is there anything else you want to do before um, the farmers, uh, you know, dismantle their camp and head to El Turel? Uh, yes. Um, Roscoe, I guess, over the course of the night, will try and um, comfort Milo, uh, try and help him relax. And But he's really trying to get information about his family and where they are located. If there if, is there anything that uh, in all the mutterings and mumblings of Milo, is there anything that actually makes any sense? Uh... Um, so among the things that he says uh, during the night, he, um, he repeatedly uh, say the name Morgaya, which you have heard before. Um, and he also talks about a floating mountain um, hovering in, in darkness. Um, but these are the only two coherent things that you can hear him say repeatedly. Uh, his condition is slowly deteriorating. Something is very wrong with him. You can actually sense him as, as he wastes away. Uh, but all your attempts at healing him or feeding him or uh, giving him something to drink so far failed. Fuck. Um... Tell Rashar, I'm really, uh, I don't know, what should we do? I feel like, I feel like the only people who can help him are the priests back in El Terrell. What would you say about, um, maybe trying to send the, the fat priest a message? Maybe he would come and, and by himself? Uh, he was the nice priest. Maybe, maybe he would help us. Maybe he wouldn't arrest us or, or, or try to kill us like the other ones did. Tal uh, looks at Thok. Um, I don't think any attempt from us or any contact from us is going to be greeted with any kind of favor. Um, maybe this you know, nice couple that let us stay for the night that's heading to El Toro will take him to the temple and hopefully they can cure him. Leica says that she uh, can definitely do that. Her uh, brother, who lives in El Toro, is a temple guard and uh, she can she can talk to him and have uh, Milo transferred to the temple. Oh, oh thank you. Thank you so much, Leica. Uh... Please do it right away, as soon as you can. He's, he, I don't know how much time he has. 
Okay, uh, in this case, uh, Haim and Leica um, dismantled their camp uh, really quickly and uh, pick up Milo and put, it, put him in their cart. Leica uh, still holds you the healing kit that uh, her family has. She says that uh, they are very close to El Turel and you obviously need it uh, much more than they do. So if you are willing to accept this, uh, it's yours. It's a it's a homemade uh, healing kit, so uh, herbs, ointments, um, you know, a bottle of alcohol, obviously made by farmers, but it, it can function as a regular healing kit. So if you want it, it's yours. It's yours. Okay, I'm, I'll I'll thank her for it, and I'll as they're. Um, loading the halfling onto the cart, I'm going to say, I don't know if the temples at El Terrell work the same as they do back home, but this may help. And I'm going to hand her 10 gold pieces to make an offering at the temple. Awesome. Uh, she, she, oh, you know, she's very surprised and startled, actually, because she has never seen that much, uh, you know, so much money uh, in her life. But she will take it with shaking hands, and thank you. Okay. So they leave, and she accepts your um, uh, token, Thok, and then they take um, their family and their carts and travel uh, toward El Turel. Um, so after you have uh, waved them goodbye, uh, the road west is still open and uh, you decided to basically you know walk side sideways to the road not uh, on top of it exactly but as as you know it's something like uh, eight to ten days of a journey to Baldur's Gate uh, at some point you feel safe enough to return to the road if you want to do that uh, otherwise let me know yeah, I'd, I'd say after two days out, it's probably safe to get back on the road. Okay. Sure. Okay, great. Um, so, let's see. Uh, the first day, um, you travel under a, in, you know, the open blue sky. It's sunny. Uh, f fall is has just started so most of the trees are shedding their leaves uh, but the weather is pleasant and you uh, pass a very pleasant day uh, of walking and thinking of what happened to you so far and uh, what lays ahead um, just before you make your camp for the night I need you to to roll perception checks And let me know how did you do. Uh, 19. Okay. And 12. Great. So, Roscoe, you spot, um, you know, just as the, as the sun is uh, going down, you spot, not very far from the road, a cart. And uh, the interesting thing about this cart is uh, it's the, the horses that uh, probably pulled her uh, are lying on the ground sprawled and you can see two figures one uh, with a, a large brimmed hat and another one who seems to be uh, the more adventurous adventurer uh, type they are standing above the horses uh, obviously talking about something um, what do you do um what are they human or um so uh they're kind of something like you know 100 feet or 150 feet uh far from you uh just behind the curve of the road so you think they're human at least they're human sized okay i'll whisper to thak um there's a couple of people ahead on the road i'm gonna sneak up and try and see if i can hear what they're talking about uh I'd say stay in the bushes, uh, or not, and then I will try and sneak up uh, to eavesdrop on their conversation. And I'll follow him. <laughs> okay, so uh, 
tail will also uh, follow you, uh, but uh, from a safe distance. Okay, so uh, just let me know your scores. <clears throat> I'm not looking at the screen right now. Uh, I rolled a 10. A 10. Uh, 25 for Rusko. Okay. Damien. Yep. You are... Um, you were part of a trading uh, caravan that headed to Baldur's Gate from Berdusk. And one day, well, your, your boss, um, a, a merchant, a rug merchant from Am, uh, his name is Natak Hornswallow. Uh, so he, he's kind of the curious kind. So he was constantly asking questions uh, and talking with all the other um, you know, wagon leaders, wagon masters that uh, joined this caravan. And, uh, you know, every evening he used to come to you and say that uh, there's something strange about this convoy. Uh, he doesn't know most of the merchants and uh, he doesn't know most of the of the guards that accompany them. Um, so he was uh, very, very uh, noisy about it. Uh, one morning you woke up with both your horses dead and uh, and the convoy is gone. Uh, you believe that uh, some magic was involved because, uh, especially you, um, you, you were very alert during the nights, um, making sure that everything goes as it should be. So you two fell asleep, obviously a, a magical sleep, and woke up with your horses uh, dead. Um, okay. Natak uh, sent a message to someone he know uh, and uh, so you know to, to get some help uh, but he didn't uh, get any response yet you know that he was whispering into a coin a silvery coin uh, and so right now you're both standing above the 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 dead corpses of the horses with Natak complaining about uh, his uh, bad luck his inability to shut up when uh, he should be and how he will get even with the, the convoy uh, leader a dwarf named Grimalk uh, at this point Damien I need to make a perception check okay and let me know uh, how, how did you roll Uh, 24. Okay, 24 is phenomenal. Not good enough to spot uh, the small halfling hiding in the bushes, but enough to spot a half-orc who seems to be peeking at you uh, from a distance. Okay. What do you do? I'll sort of give the halfling a little bit of a look and then wave so the halfling you don't spot the halfling you you only spot Thok the half orc yeah I'll, I'll I'll wave to him hello and I'll just keep waving at the moment have you seen this and Nethek uh, turns to you and, and says are you mad what are you doing there's a half orc I think standing over there hello a half orc maybe that's the help we're uh, about to receive where, where where do you see it Can't I'll s point hello. to their direction Problems? I guess so we were traveling quite nicely and all of a sudden we fell asleep and this happened um well, I have to admit, it's very curious, shall we say. Infinitely curious. And, and uh, basically my character just keeps staring at the, the horses, a little bit sort of lost in a, in a world all of his own. 
um, Nethak, the merchant, uh, turns to you, um, Thok, and he asks, So did Captain Durana sent you? Sorry, never met the gentleman. A gentlewoman. Okay. Um, and then Nethak turns to uh, you, Devlin, and says, She's about to park at a port nearby. We have to go and secure it. Okay. Which which um, port? There's a ruined port uh, just north of here. She's she'll uh, she'll be able to park her ship there. And uh, the merchant looks at you, Thok, and says, uh, "You there? Uh, do you mind to?" Um, you wouldn't mind to uh, earn a few gold pieces, a very easy gold pieces, that is. I need some help to transfer all of this, and he points to the cart, and on top of it there are a lot of uh, crates. To the, to the nearest port, it's just a, a mile away from here, to the north. A very easy walk. Yeah, sure, I guess I could lend a hand. What happened to the horses? He looks at the horses and then he looks at you and then he kind of stops and uh, says, Oh, where are my manners? I'm terribly sorry, good sir. My name is Nethek Hornswallow, a rug merchant from Arm. And may I say, the best rug uh, merchant in Arm. I'm I'm still sort of gazing at these horses a little bit, but I will sort of extend a hand to sort of vaguely in the air in the hope that someone's going to shake my hand. And I'll say, my name's Devlin. Rusko will sort of jump out of the bushes at this point and grab your hand and say, hi, I'm Rusko Truffle-Nose. Nice to meet you. Hi. Isn't it amazing? Just how things happen in this world. The you wonders know, of the universe. I, <laughs> well, I, I am surprised every day, many times. Pretty much everything is a surprise to me. He, he sort of sounds as if he's ever so slightly... Um, he's taken something that's made him a little bit trippy because he, he's got slow he sort of talks in a slow manner isn't it amazing the way the world works well yes yes yes, yes. of course of course uh Devlin, but uh captain durana won't wait for us uh you know all day uh, night is falling and we should be at the port okay and uh, then he turns to you, Roscoe, and Thok, and says, uh, Do you have any other uh, able men or women like yourself who are willing to take some gold out of my pouch uh, in order to transfer these crates into the port? Sure, our friend uh, Tal Rashar, he's, he's, he's right over there. He's, he's super strong. He can carry the most. This is this is wonderful. Please, please. And then he uh, uh, produces a small sack of coins and give each of you an advance of 20 gold. Uh, and he says, uh, there will be more coming uh, when we transfer all the crates. Wow, you're rich. Uh, yes, if I may say so myself, yes. And uh, he points to Devlin. Um, uh, this is uh, Devlin, and he is uh, one of my most loyal friends. You see, I was kind of stranded in the middle of the road by my own caravan master. A very unfortunate event, but when I will get back to Baldur's Gate, uh, hopefully with the aid of my uh, dearest captain, uh, Miss Durana, uh, some payback will be in due. Were you attacked by... I would by... say you were very lucky. What makes you say that? Well, whoever killed your horses could have killed you instead. Kill me? Kill me? Impossible. 
I've never heard of any, any, any rude... You said you were sleeping. Well, I, I was sleeping, yes. Well, uh, this is what they do uh, during those uh, travelers. Uh, other, I mean, if, if there is something interesting to do, I obviously will be doing it. But uh, most of the time, yes, sleep. I'll, well, I'll yes, put, but I'll put if my they were able to kill your horses, they could have killed you. I'll put my hand up as if I'm in, like, my class to speak. So, you know, yes sir, yes sir type. <laughs> uh, uh, Dave, uh, sorry, um, Nethak turns to you and says, Oh, you can speak freely, my friend. You, after all, I'm the only one left here uh, to watch my back. All the others, creeping little bastards, have left. So speak freely. I... I felt the energy as it passed over us. I think it was a spell. Yes. Very, very sleepy spell. I'm telling you, that's the that that the bold passenger who stinks of magic, who is constantly whispering at our caravan's master ear. I didn't like him from the first time I saw him. He had a very nice gold chain. That is all I really remember of him. A gold chain. Very beautiful. Interesting. Uh, hopefully. Did you see any medallion or any identifiable uh, rune or a symbol? Maybe we can track him in Baldur's Gate and I'll pay him what he's due. Uh, out, out of character, would you like to use that or I'm, I'm just sort of coming up with random sort of trinkets that he'd have been looking at because it was shiny curveball right I didn't see that it was just so shiny must have cost a penny I'd say a pretty penny well well I suggest we then uh Head to the port and catch a ride on Durana's vessel to Baldur's Gate. And then he turns to you, uh, Roscoe, Tha um, and Thok. Uh, where are you headed? Well, actually, we're headed for the gate. So um, I'll make you an, an, an alternate offer to the one you said for paying us to help you. Is uh, we'll trade you for passage. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. I'm sure Captain Durana will be thrilled. Uh, to see uh, a couple of uh, locals uh, and then he pauses and says well you are locals aren't you um more not, or less not exactly but i have i have a couple of questions in fact i have three questions question number one where is captain durana from question number two have you noticed uh, any dragon cult, dragon worshipping cultists on the road? Question number three. Have you noticed the stream of refugees on the road? Uh, he pauses to think and then he says, well, uh, as for the first question, Captain Durana is from Chalt. It's a very, very far away land. Um, and uh, well, she, she came here and uh, that's actually all I know uh, about her. Uh, she owes me a favor. I once helped her in a very un, uh, uh, unfriendly situation in Baldur's Gate. Uh, so uh, she gave me this coin and he lifts it up and then he says, she told me that if I need her help, I can talk to her uh, and call her through this coin. So I did. I was um, uh, mistakenly, uh, I mistakenly thought uh, uh, this gentleman here, and he points at Thok, uh, to be a member of her crew. As to the second uh, question, uh, uh, dragon cultists, no, I, I haven't seen, or, well, uh, I guess they don't waive their uh, so affiliation uh, in any way. Uh, am I right? Um, it depends on the, on the cultist, I think. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. They're a very diverse group but of may assholes. But maybe the, 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 that bald man, uh, who was an asshole, as you put it, uh, maybe he is a cultist. He stank of magic, and each time I uh, came across and tried to talk to him, he simply uh, 
uh, closed the curtains of his wagon. He was very unfriendly and rude, especially to uh, a, a man like me. I am, I am, after all, uh, associated with the Eagle Shield Noble family in Waterdeep, um, and I'm a very respectable rug merchant from Arm. So, uh, thinking about poisoning my my horses and putting me to sleep, and this is unheard of. Uh, and refugees, yes, unfortunately, yes, I've seen many of those recently. Well, thank you for answering my questions. Not everybody does. Are you having problems with dragon cultists? I'll, I'll turn to Roscoe and Throck, Throck uh, and ask that question. So. Well, I mean, we're alive, so we're having fewer problems than other people are with them. But yeah, they attacked uh, Greenest uh, just uh, a few days ago. Um, that's a that's a town to the south of here. You probably know, especially you, the, uh, uh, Mr. Rich Man, sir. Um, it's on the road uh, to Am um, uh, in the south, or one of the roads. And yeah, they uh, they're doing all kinds of, of, of uh, nasty things. Tell me more. I am very intrigued. And he, he, you've now got his attention. So he sort of, he doesn't stare at you, but he, he can, he sort of keeps looking at you, hoping you're gonna tell him more, because he really wants to know. I really want to know this. He says. Tell me of your adventures. Along the way, along the way, plenty of time to talk while we move and, and haul those crates. You won't get yourself to the port. Okay. Um, so, you, yes, yeah, so you do have some time to discuss whatever you want to discuss as you haul those crates. Um, Basically, each one of you can uh, pick up one or two and uh, Nethak will even... Uh, Lend a hand and take one uh, himself. Now, Thok, you uh, noticed that Nathak, while a merchant, he he is wearing you know uh, traveling clothes and you know beside of the uh, large hat that does identify him as a sort of um, merchant, noble, or whatnot. Um, he is ready for uh, you know adventure. Uh, you especially notice his short sword. Uh, it looks plain and well used, but uh, for some reason you are drawn to it. Okay. Um, and if you want to discuss whatever you want to discuss uh, during your um, one mile travel, feel free to do so now. No problem. I'm just sort of. I'll read the um, previous summaries you've put on there. That that's what he's going to do. So he's going to try and he's basically going to be the most inquisitive person ever in the world. He's literally asking about anything and everything, even stuff that um, has relatively nothing to do with what with your past. He just sort of keeps going off on tangents. And in true bard style, I'm going to spin him a tale that is loosely based in reality. He basically uh, then gazes at you like a like a five year old child listening to a story. You know, he's sort of got his hands under his chin, and he's just completely and utterly captivated what you're telling him. Fresco will also sort of interject. Um, at point, particularly when, when Thok embellishes or embroiders on the truth in some way, Roscoe will yeah, sort of say, no, that's not what happened. <laughs> uh, so about every other sentence. Yeah, pretty much. Um, I also will be asking, and is it Devlin is your name? Yeah. Uh, um, ask a little bit about, so where um, and, and, and where are you going? And, and what's your business in this part of the world? Uh I am, I am a traveler to see the world, the sensations that this life has to offer are fascinating to me. 
I don't necessarily have a destination, but the route plan and the path I will take is my true goal. I have no real place I'm moving to. This is where taking jobs with traders and such are just offer me so much to see and hear. It has been fascinating. Where do you How... come from? Do you have any family? I am originally from Cormia, the beautiful city. It is an amazing, it is truly amazing at night. It glitters with such life and such diversity. Um, Damien, at this point, uh, sorry, Devlin, I need you to make a perception check as you all are engaged in conversation and kind of you know uh, working your way to north towards uh, whatever port Nathak has in mind uh, definitely in your glance because you are uh, kind of under the effect of some uh, you know uh, <laughs> something that you smoke or ate or uh, nobody knows for sure your gaze yep. kind of wonders are, are you pharmacologically enhanced <laughs> he he's he's what would be the best way to put it he's drunk on life <laughs> <laughs> it is mushroom season we've established so, <laughs> yeah, so. no it, it's nothing like that but he's just so i need um, i need your perception uh role let me know how you how you did okay i'm getting two different numbers yeah you should use the first one uh, so I got it right the first time. Okay, no, that's twelve. Okay. Um, so with a roll of twelve, what you notice is this colorful butterfly that uh, simply appears before your eyes and kind of um, flutters to the left and to the right, um, and then the butterfly um, kind of uh, dissolves and. As you focus your gaze, uh, you can see this old and ruined structure uh, just a little north of where you are all um, at the present. And uh, you can see a dock uh, half crumbled and you can see a guard post uh, in ruins. Uh, so this is probably the, the port that uh, Nethak uh, referenced. Uh, you do, however, see something moving. Uh, on the dock and into the guard post and you kind of uh, think that it was definitely not human size uh, maybe even giant size and then he, it, whatever it was it went into the guard uh, tower and disappears I'll let everyone else know and sort of is that where we're going and I'll point that way um, uh, uh, what? Uh, let me have a look. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, finally, we are here. Uh, I don't see Captain Durana's ship, but uh, I'm sure she'll be here any moment now. Can I ask the race, please, of Dorana? And, um... He's actually asking the question like that. Yeah, so... Uh, it's like in a third person, so... So Nathak uh, kind of coughs as is, you know, it's it's a very um, a rude question. But then he looks at you and says, oh, yes, well, uh, half elf, I, I can expect those things. Well, uh, D Captain Durana is human, of course. It's just I saw something that looked not so human walking around there. That's why I ask. Uh, Seemed well, a little strange. Not human. Uh, well, she does have some orcs and some uh, dwarfs and maybe a halfling or two in her crew. But uh, so if that's uh, what you've seen, then maybe, uh, maybe a scout of her crew, uh, perhaps. Uh, but you all sense that Nathak isn't very convinced. Mm. 
I thought I would ask because that seemed a little strange. It did not look definitely did not look human or half elf orc maybe okay I have two questions okay question number one why is this port a ruin why is it not a regular port question number two do you want me to sneak up and find out uh, who what what that was or who that was might be a good idea. So Nethak uh, settles the crate down, uh, removes his hat and draws his short sword and licks uh, his lips and he smiles to your Roscoe and he says, yes, yes, that's a very good uh, uh, suggestion. Uh, this port hasn't been used since El Turel resurrected its walls. Uh, this was an old port used by the town that uh, preceded uh, El Turel. Very ancient, not in use, but uh, for us merchants, uh, it, it, it does come handy once in a while, and he smiles at you. Okay. Uh, I'll go be, now. Be careful. Okay, I will be. Anyone is joining our halfling? No, we'll let him go alone this time, but I'm going to give him some inspiration before he goes. Okay. I will give him some guidance. So I will I will tell him that if he goes that way round, then it should be harder to see him. So when it comes to your um stealth save, you'll gain an extra D four because um, actually it's casting a spell, physically casting the spell guidance. Awesome. Okay. Every little helps. Yeah. Oh, nice. So Roscoe, please roll your stealth uh, check and let me know how uh, did you do, taking into account both Devlin's spell and Thok's help. Oh, I think I they will both come in handy. <laughs> <laughs> and Thok, what's your inspiration? Is it a D6? It's a D6. So total is 18. 18, okay. And I assume uh, the inspiration and guidance had uh, a lot to do with this score. <laughs> it looks like it. <laughs> okay. So, uh, Roscoe, you um, duck low and start circling uh, the guard tower in order to pick into what lies uh, ahead. And you find some difficulties. The terrain isn't very uh, comfortable. The, the river... Um, the Chointar River that flows um, um, just, uh, you know, a couple, not a couple of feet, but uh, something like, you know, 50 feet from you uh, is making this uh, land and, and uh, area kind of muddy. Uh, the vegetation isn't very concealing, so you are having some trouble to find the correct spot. But then you remember De uh, Devlin's uh, advice and uh, Thox. Um, words of encouragement and indeed you can um, approach the tower at least in your opinion undetected what you find inside or you don't find it inside you can see that the tower is basically cut in half so uh, half of it is simply rubble and before you see anything you can hear something you can hear two voices um, which go something like that I ate a rabbit yesterday. I will eat it today. And then the uh, other voice says, No, 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 no. My turn. My turn. And you can hear some squibbles and, and you know, someone is fighting, uh, bumping into things um, in such force that, uh, you know, dust is falling from cracks in the tower. And they are speaking common. I take it to each other. Yes. Okay. Um. I'll I'll pop into the tower. I guess. Try and see who who who's talking. Okay. So you pick into the tower, and you can see that a huge, huge two-headed giant is basically sitting inside the the tower, using its first floor as the seat surface, and he's 
um, feet are dangling up to the to the first floor to the to the ground floor so think of a guard tower split in half and used as a huge stone chair um, for this creature and you can see that uh, both of its faces are painted one in red and one in blue and its hair is kind of bridled um, and decorated with all kinds of stinking bones uh, some of them the, the flesh the meat is still on them uh, and huge tusks uh, protrude from its uh, lower jaw and both of its heads seems to be arguing over uh, the corpse of a dead something uh, it was furry but now you barely recognizable uh, what it actually was um, and the most troubling uh, thing that you see is two huge tree trunks shaped into clubs that rest very very nearby this creature and he's looking at the water and arguing with itself do either of the voices seem like congenial or like someone that Roscoe could make friends with? Um, so it seems like the the red face uh, is kind of more aggressive and assertive and the blue face, uh, the, the face that is painted blue, is a little bit more reasonable but a cowers uh, before the red face. So. Huh. Okay. And is there like aside from the clubs and the um, the corpse of whatever creature is there anything interesting uh, in the room um, so the guard uh, tower is basically a ruin uh, you do see a, a huge sack uh, just in front of this uh, giant and uh, according to the stains on on the sack itself you suspect that among other things probably his food is stuffed inside uh, but you do see kind of bumps and lumps that uh, resemble other things, like maybe a pot uh, and maybe something that, you know, looks like a shield or something like that, but you're not sure. Okay. Um, I will uh, sneak back to the others and report on what I saw. I will eat it today. I'm very hungry. No, it's my turn. So I will um, pop out of nowhere, I, I, or somewhere, and say, so, uh, I think we have a problem in the, in, in the tower. In what way? Well, there is a giant with two heads, and one of them has a red face and is very aggressive, and then the other one has a blue face. He seems like maybe... I, I could make friends with him, but I probably not as long as the red face is still there. And um, both both faces seem hungry, and they have clubs the size of tree trunks. And he's I don't know maybe twenty feet tall, and uh, yeah. So that's sort of the situation. Two faces, you say? This is yes. th this comes from Natek. Oh my God. More of a bless upon us. This is an Etin. Uh, I, I must notify Captain Durana if, if his is her ship. He, he will sink it. Perhaps he's done that already. We don't know. And then he turns to uh, Roscoe. Did you see any rubble? Did you see any bodies? Um, there was a sack full of something. Uh,. Uh, but I only saw the body of, of a furry animal uh, on the ground, which looked like it had been devoured recently, and also the, 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 the giant seemed very hungry. So he probably didn't just eat a ship full of people today. Uh, we, we, we must dispose of it. We, we must uh, barge in and kill it. Maybe we could just lure it away. That's... That's a possibility, but we have to lure him far enough so when he sees the ship, we'll have enough time to jump on board and, and set sail. We don't want to see this creature throwing rocks on the on the ship. He will punch it and, and uh, sink it in minutes. Did you see a ship there? I didn't. No.
Of course, I didn't really look for a ship, though, to be perfectly honest. But um, there wasn't one in the tower. I can promise you that. Okay. Because is your friend up? Oh, sorry, I'll turn to an attack and say, because it sounds as if your friend is not even there yet, unless he's already been, he or she has already been sank well, by this thing. Well, I, I do think that if this creature would have sank the ship, he would have taken stuff from it, and, and perhaps uh, people or crew members, and uh, we should have seen some evidence for it. And he turns to Roscoe and says, well, if our little, uh, excuse me, sir, if our gentleman here didn't spot anything that uh, then obviously that didn't happen yet uh, nevertheless I, I suggest we simply barge in and slaughter the best it's it's for the best of us all and we are risking captain durana and i will not allow it okay this thing it sounds amazing two heads Yes, yes, two heads. Their arguments must be amazing. <laughs> two heads and each Again, of them. he'll sort of be going off a little bit on a sort of a, hey, wow, this is cool, man, type thing. Each of, each of these heads is more stupid than the other. And he, he kind of waves his sword uh, and looks at you, Thok, Roscoe, and also to Tal. Well, are you with me or do you stay here? Your plan, you lead. Okay. Um, so he turns to you, Roscoe, and says, which is the safest way there? Uh, we have to make sure he doesn't see us. I, I just went a very, a very good way. I, I can lead you back. Okay. So in this case, uh, you all uh, kind of fall uh, back in line after Roscoe, and I need you all to make... Um, stealth checks but this time with advantage because Roscoe already knows the terrain uh, and he um, leads you through the path that uh, Devlin and Thok showed him why I'm glad we got advantage I got a nine <laughs> okay I got 18 18 and uh, Roscoe uh, for me 15 18 and thok we said nine uh tell oh a natural 20 amazing and uh, nathak Ooh, not good okay so um thok you and nathak are kind of uh making a lot of noise as you travel toward the tower you kind of stumble on every rock and uh, stick your boots into every puddle of mud uh, while the rest while kind of... singing under my breath, yes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, and Nathak is, is constantly talking to you. Well, well, we should approach it this way and then I'll jump on its back and then you can take one of those rocks you're carrying and smash it along its face and then we can... So he kind of, you know, describes this whole battle plan to you. Um, so eventually you all find yourself um, very, very close to the to the tower Roscoe, you immediately notice that the arguments are gone. There is uh, silence from within the tower. Can we see anyone there? So Can we see the Etin? Um, the, the opened part of the tower is facing the river, and you're basically coming from behind, so no. Unless one of you climbs the tower and peeks from one of its uh, arrow slits, um, you probably won't be able to see the creature from here. Okay, um, I'll, I can sneak in again and check if he's still if he's still there or what happened. Okay, so roll again for your stealth. Okay, so with a 24, you manage to slip in and you find the giant standing. Uh, both of its faces kind of each each one looks the other way and in each of his hands he is holding those tree trunks so he just stands there very very alert and obviously awaiting someone to come uh, you, you think he probably heard Thok and Nathak huh 
Is there only one sort of entrance or exit to this tower? Yes. So, as I said, it's a, a tower cut in half. So its entire front uh, end is basically open to the river. Ah, okay. Um, okay, so I'll, I'll come back and, and uh, let them know that I think um, he seems to be expecting company, maybe us, maybe somebody else, I don't know. Uh, well, um, I guess this being sneaky sneaky is probably not worth doing now so what was that song you were singing and Nathan uh, said oh a very good idea Deflin someone needs to sing a song so uh, this creature will be lured uh, into uh, toward one direction of the tower and then we can simply attack it from the other direction I can do that if you want. Or we can simply climb on the tower yeah. using ropes and, and jump on it from above. Uh, if, if you want a song for distraction, I'll give it a try. Sounds, sounds epic, he says. I'll go hide in the bushes. Bye. <laughs> Okay, so Roscoe uh, disappears. Thok, which way do you want to go, uh, right or left? Um, I'll go around the left-hand side of the tower. Okay. And as soon as I spot the... You said it was in Eden. I'll sing it a lullaby. <laughs> I'll place up my um, uh, mage armor. Okay. And I will follow... Um, I will follow everyone else, basically. So Roscoe and all that. I'll follow Roscoe because he's going the other way, isn't he? So. Okay. Um, so we have Roscoe uh, to the right with uh, Devlin. <clears throat> Thok to the left. Uh, Thok, Tal, Rashar will uh, basically go with you, but will keep his distance to cover uh, to cover you if something goes back. And Nath Nathak, you can hear him kind of mutters, oh, like the old days of adventuring parties, sword drones, fighting giants. This is amazing. Um, Too much to hope it has less than 29 hit points, right? So, surprisingly enough, when you uh, cast your spell, um, you finish it, and then you can hear uh, snoring. And then uh, immediately you can hear uh, a voice says, Wake up! Wake up! No sleep now! Enemies! Food! So you believe you put to sleep one of its heads? I will cast sleep on the other head. <laughs> okay. And I will... Just because it looks a lot of fun, to be quite honest. And I will increase my... I will increase my sleep so it's cast at second level. Okay. Because obviously it's only a first level spell. Okay. So, so do uh, that and let me know how many hit points did you put to sleep. Uh, where are we? So that is... If you don't have a uh, the macro built in yet it's uh, 78 yeah so if you've got the spell on your character sheet if you'll yeah. click the spells tab you can click the spell and then it'll ask you what level you want to cast it at oh right okay uh, I say I have I don't think I've done that much I don't think I've put in the increase for you know the level so I'll just stick in 78 okay and we'll do it that way That is. So how much did you roll? Twenty one. Twenty one. So uh, Thok, did you roll the same, right? Uh, I rolled twenty nine. Oh, twenty nine. Okay. So twenty one. Uh, okay. So. 
the other head is put to sleep too and then uh, you can all hear this uh, huge body uh, slumping down and crashing on the on the ground and all the tower shakes um, that said okay so what what do you do now I think we should start going towards it and see what's okay so as you all go out of your hiding places and approach this uh, huge hulking creature you can see that uh, indeed it is asleep uh, but there's something strange about the way he sleeps. You can see that both of the heads are kind of trying to wake up. Um, and I'll have um, Thok, the, the bard, uh, roll your, um, I don't know, uh, can be history check if you want, or nature. Neither one's particularly good, so I'll give it a shot. 16 uh, 16 in history uh, history or nature what did you roll history history okay so history is good so you remember learning that ethins are very hard to put asleep whenever one of the heads is asleep the other one um, is is always awake so um, the spell effect the, the creature but you think that he will wake up uh, maybe in a minute or two at least one of its heads will wake up well the spell duration is only a minute so oh okay sorry so I thought it was more well we can knock their weapons into the water I mean I'm, I'm assuming he's still sitting close standing close to the water so we could just sort of push his um, weapons into the water and then they'll be useless when he does awake. Um, yep. Easier to take down. Yes, you can definitely do that. Okay, so Tal, uh, Tal Rashar will help you uh, kind of push those huge tree trunks into the water and as you do they kind of float down the stream uh, toward uh, Baldur's Gate. Okay. Okay. Um, Roscoe, while he's uh, sort of unconscious, would it be possible for him to sort of sneak up uh, and check out what's in his big sack? Yes, obviously. Um. So you approach uh, as your friends uh, kind of uh, you know, carefully taking the weapons out, uh, those tree trunks, and, and um, throwing them into the uh, sea. What you find in the, the sack is this. Um, so you find a giant-sized kettle inside, uh, as you suspected. Uh, you find another lump of flesh with some fur still stuck on it. Uh, you think it was a sheep, maybe? And uh, in addition, you find six humanoid skulls uh, strung up uh, on a, a rough uh, rope. And a steel shield, uh, which is dented but you can see a symbol on it and um, a signature says that says lion shield coaster okay i think it's worth taking that i think um i suppose the question is are we going to take him apart when he does awake yeah. if we're going to do that we don't want to wait for him to wake we should just lay in no because that's what i'm thinking because we'll get I suppose advantage against him if we just sort of start pummeling him now well if if he's asleep he's prone so all attacks against him all melee all melee attacks are advantage and automatic crits hey nice okay so if you want to do that uh, I need you to uh, tell me who is attacking and um, 
roll your damage. Uh, we can we can do it together, I suppose. So if we can time ourselves, so we go like three, two, one, and then all hit him at the same time if we can. Cast uh, time it well. Yeah, Rusko will participate. That I'm going to leave everything in the sack for the time being. Yeah, uh, I was thinking about leaving the ant alone, but the uh, this the uh, humanoid skull necklace kind of did it in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He needs to learn. Okay. I'm, I'm going to start um, when we open up attacks on him. Um, I'm going to start on the on the redhead. Okay, so um, you have uh, advantage on your attack rolls, and if you hit, it's a critical hit. Uh, as long as it's a melee attack, or at least we're, we're if you're within five feet of the target. So on the count of one, and Nathak is very excited. You can see that his a short sword is kind of uh, shakes in his hand. Uh, his eyes gleam from excitement. Um, who who does the counting? I will basically put my hand really high up in the air and three fingers, two fingers, one finger. Then we all go. Amazing. So, so each of one, each of you, please roll your uh, attack with advantage. If you hit, it's a crit. Let me know uh, how much uh, hit points did you. Okay, I'm going to cast Witch Bolt, and again, I'm going to push it up to second, to a second level spell. Okay. Which means I get two d twelve. Okay, so let's start with you. I got. Um, sorry, what? How does a crit work again? Sorry. You double the amount of dice. Well, a uh, spell isn't isn't a melee attack, so it won't have that effect. Oh, oh, okay. Um, then I've done fifteen damage to him. Okay, fifteen. Great, Thok. Uh, twenty with advantage. Yes, hit. Damage. Uh, 13. 13, okay. Um, Roscoe? I'm going to stab him with my spear and then follow it up with my uh, flurry of blows attack. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Spear, oh, just 10 to That hit. didn't double the damage. Hang on. So that would be actually 22 for me. Oh, okay. So 20 in instead of 13? Correct. 22. Okay, Roscoe? Um, actually, the 13 is kind of, I think... Oh, no, maybe not. Well, it, there's two D8s there, plus... Anyway, anyway. so yeah, I, I rolled a 10 to hit. A 10 uh, with advantage, so a 10 doesn't hit him. You uh, have trouble piercing his thick, thick hide. Actually, you know something? My, I rolled I rolled two dice and the second one was a one mm -hmm. but because I have the lucky trait I can reroll once ah. um, so I'm gonna, <laughs> let me just reroll that let me reroll that one okay see. Uh, oh gosh <laughs> terrible I'm rolling uh. terrible today uh, so yeah no so 10 misses okay and then I'll try with my flurry of blows to make two I'm really just gonna try and just punch him in the eye uh, twice um, okay uh, he's got two eyes so. four eyes four eyes actually yeah oh my gosh okay well 16 for one yes one to hit and 21 to hit for yes the other. so uh, these both go in okay and so these are both we'll see and then they're both crits yes so I'll add another 2d4 to that so total of 12 and 7, 19 damage. 19 damage. Okay. And Tal, uh, let's see if he hits. Um, he will use his uh, two hand axes. So he rolled uh, a 5 on one of his rolls. The other one is uh, a 17, which hits. And then damage. 
and that's a double damage so that's eight and another eight so 16 with one attack which is amazing okay uh let's remember he's an advantage so that first attack that missed he did he roll twice or just once? oh you're right sorry uh no still it's still low seven so i also when i did my damage i should have rolled so i rolled after to hit rather i i forgot i have to roll for which bolt to hit mm -hmm. and i rolled after if you understand yeah so i still hit i got 21 it was okay. just my mistake no. i did no. it the wrong way around i should have attacked first and then done the damage but no i got hit anyway i would imagine with 21. no problem let me just sum up the damage okay so uh you all on the count of uh devlin kind of lower your weapons and strike at this uh, huge creature so you all punch in um and when you draw out and take one step back the creature jumps to its leg it to its uh, feet and roars uh it's bloodied covered with uh its its own blood and is very 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 un uh, angry and now i need you all to make um i i'm about 60 or 70 feet away from him because which bolt is a range attack so i don't need to be close to him to use it so you only uh, oh i see got it i'm not i'm not in hand-to-hand -hand combat with him that's so that's what i'm saying okay i need it's you all to make uh initiative rolls i believe which bolt has a range of 30 feet i thought it was 90. let me just bring it up i'll i'll be as oh hold on i'll just bring it up here okay. i think it's 90 feet for which bolt uh in any way, uh, let's let's uh, roll for initiative and let me know your score scores. Nine. Nine. My bad. It's yeah. It is thirty feet, so I'll stay within thirty feet of him. Okay. To use it, and my initiative is. Ugh. Eleven. Eleven. Okay. Masco got uh, twenty-one. Okay. Uh, definitely. And tell is on nine and uh, Nathak is on two. Oh my god okay um so Nathak uh shrieks in panic when this creature jumps up um but roscoe you get to, to go first I guess all I can aim for really is the back of the knee, if that's even, uh, if I could even reach that far. But uh, yeah, I'm I'm standing my ground, and I'm gonna try and stab him, and then spend another key point on a couple of other attacks. Okay. So spear, uh, 17 to hit. Yes. For seven damage. Seven damage is awesome. Okay, so you kind of. Uh, sink your spear into uh, the, the backside of its knee and the creature roars in anger. One of its heads turned to you. Uh, Devlin, you're next. I'm still, um, so for my un unarmed strike, uh, a 23 to hit. Oh yeah, sorry. Of course. And damage? Uh, damage is another 7 on that. Okay. And you've got to make, um, I think... I'm gonna try, I guess I'm trying to sort of destabilize him or really just knock out the back of this knee and sort of knock him back down again. Okay, awesome. So with my um, open hand uh, technique, um, I'd like you to make him, he needs to make a DC 12 dex saving throw. Oh, dex, not very, not a very good uh, uh, ability for him. So uh, he rolled a nine. Uh, so with his minus one, it's even an eight. Uh, so what happens? He falls uh, prone. Knock him right back down again. <laughs> okay, so he's on his ground again, uh, which probably makes things easier for you, Devlin. Uh, well, which bolt basically uh, after the initial attack, I just keep doing damage until until the end of the spell, if you understand. Okay. So I do another eleven damage to him. It's, it's this long streak of sort of multicolored energy that shoots from his hand and just buries itself in his chest 
like a almost like a pneumatic drill. Okay. Awesome. Um great. So, how many uh how many hit points did you do to him? 11 in total? 11. Oh yeah. my god. Okay, so uh you can see Devlin kind of stands back uh, Emperor Palpatine like with his, with lightnings from his fingers and the, the creature is twitching as uh, lightning covers its body he's shrieking and spurting out blood and then he uh, simply lay lies still uh, obviously dead and I will say you have paid the price for your lack of vision okay a la Emperor Palpatine. So, you know, you've got to keep the Star Wars <laughs> going. <laughs> so, Nathak uh, kind of uh, uh, takes hold of himself and looks at you, Devlin, and pats you on the shoulder. Well done, laddie. Well done. Well, actually, well done, all of you. Uh, you may have all saved our life. And then he points, and you can see uh, a very dark ship uh, slowly, slowly approaches from the east. On the on the waters of the river. Okay, I will walk over to the Etin and sort of look at it a little bit, and go, "Isn't it amazing how life has made this creature with two heads?" And he sort of gazes at it for a moment. Incredible amazing piece of life rest in peace both of you and he'll walk back to the group yeah I guess Devlin might be talking to himself at that point because Roscoe is right back up at that sack <laughs> and uh, dragging the shield out and also probably also this I guess necklace or, or bracelet of skulls um not not to keep it, but just to sort of um, sort of show the you know show the party what he found in the lair of the creature, and you know question well what what sh what should we do with these heads and and uh, does anyone want a shield and uh, hmm. so Roscoe it looks nice the shield actually Roscoe when you uh, kind of take out the skulls and look at them you can see something very interesting. Uh, their eyes are kind of inlaid with gold there's like a gold plating to the uh to their uh, to the inside of their sockets huh uh thok or or uh devlin or i mean uh the skulls are kind of weird um do you know what this means uh i don't have detect magic but do I, can I make a roll to see if I can understand, if I've heard of this? Uh, you can roll an arcana check. Ugh. I'm not sure I want to with a minus one. Okay. So, so um, I've, I've, again, it's the first one because I've got three and 17. Yeah, it's the first one. The second one yep, you use right. only when you have an advantage. Um, so you look at those uh, skulls and you immediately, uh, you know, realize that plating their eyes or their eye sockets in gold is not something done for decorative reasons uh, you're pretty sure they these can be used in some sort of a ritual but you don't have any clue or idea uh, to which one uh, I'll can I... let everyone know what I think can I cast identify on them to see if there's any kind of magic involved yes you can And Could I'm going to take shield as well? 10 minutes and do it as a ritual so that I don't burn a spell slot. Okay, no problem. Could you check the shield as well to see whether that's... I um... oh, no, can you, can you only do it on one item, is it? Um, No, I can do... I can do both. Cool. Okay, so you spend uh, 10 minutes in preparing the ritual and casting it on the skulls and shield. Uh, and during this time, Captain Durana's ship uh, approaches the port and 
Uh, Thok, while you're busy, uh, Nithak is looking at the ship and uh, looks at all of you and says, well, here is a ride to Baldur's Gate. And he points at the ship and says, the mighty Zarkanen. Isn't she a beauty? Is she a beauty? Um, not really. Um, it's it's a very very strange ship in in the sense of that uh, the color of its wood is almost black. Uh, you haven't seen uh, none of you actually seen a ship this dark before, um, and you you are pretty sure that uh, it's because of the strange wood from which it from which it is made of. Um, also, the sails are not the usual cloth that is used um, uh, in in any other ship that you've seen in the Sword Coast. Uh, it's, it looks like uh, leaves from a huge tree or something like that. It's very, very un, un you know, not something that you see every day. Um, uh, given yeah. the sort of unusual and almost ominous appearance of the ship, could I just do a quick um, insight check on Nathak, just to see if he actually intends anything okay uh, malicious you us. you can definitely do that uh, thok you learn that uh, 19 on insight okay um so thok you learned that these calls can be used uh, uh in a rich in a, a spell or ritual that is called speak with dead um and you're not sure what the what do they add to this um ritual but you think that if you cast Speak on Dead on these skulls, uh, something interesting might be happening. And you are sure it's a, a sort of a divination spell. Um, so they might answer questions or say something or reveal something, but you're not sure. Uh, so the, okay. these are obviously magical. Um Thok, you look at Nathak, and other than uh, watching him kind of play with the coin, with the silvery coin uh, that he was speaking to uh, earlier, you don't sense any uh, insincerity out of him. Uh, he's obviously very excited to see the ship. Uh, you do rec you do see the, the, the coin. On one side of it, you can see a, a skull is, um, you know, uh, uh, inlaid. Uh, the other side uh, looks like some sort of a compass, uh, or, or at least the, the outline of, of the compass is embedded into the metal. Um, my Rasko isn't very bright, um, but might he guess that it's like a, it's like the association with pirate hood, or you know, sort of so obvious that even he might uh, infer that. From yes, that you do believe that this is the case. Huh. Well, I guess, I mean, I've never been friends with a pirate before, so that, that's new. That'll be fun. Okay, so the ship uh, stops just uh, um, in front of the port and uh, throws an anchor uh, next to the dock. And uh, there is this railing that uh, is lowered from the ship to the dock. And on top of the of the deck, um, you can see a very dark-skinned woman. Um, she has this um, wide triangle-like hat that she is uh, wearing with a rapier uh, on her hip. Other than that, she is wearing fine black leathers, uh, and one of her eyes is very very bright um you think that it's a um, um not not a, a glass eye but maybe something else maybe a silvery eye or a gem like eye um but obviously it's not her natural uh eye and she looks at all of you and says ah nefek we meet again but who are these strangers? And he uh, looks at her and uh, says, Well, I will let them introduce themselves. After all, they were a great help to me. I'll just run up right up to her. Hi, I'm Rusko Treplenose. Uh, nice to meet you. 
what's in your eye? Are you a pirate? <laughs> and she kind of fixes her a gleaming eye at you and says, I see a little man. I see a ghost. You will make trouble for my crew. I do not want you on my ship. I won't make any trouble for your crew. Where's the ghost? I'm not... Where, where do you see the ghost? What does the ghost look like? What kind of ghost? And when you say that, you can see uh, another woman um, horribly scarred and with half of her hair missing, obviously because of, of some sort of a skin disease. She approaches uh, Captain Durana and whispers something on her ear as uh, both of them look at you. And uh, at this point, Nathak says, uh, no, no, please, I, I gave my word. They helped me, I paid them, and they also need a ride to Baldur's Gate. Uh, everything will be all right. And at this point, uh, the captain looks at Thok and uh, Devlin and Tal, and you can see that she expects an introduction. Hello, my name is Devlin, and he'll put his hand out. Tell me. What is that? Is beautiful wood you have your ship made out of? Where did it come from? Um, and Devlin, you noticed that the woman uh, behind Captain uh, Durana, the the heavily scarred one, she kind of her eyes kind of widen as she see you, and more likely as she hear you, and she whispers again something on the captain's ear and uh, Captain Durana asks you you there have you ever been to Nangalore you have the slur of someone who consumed one of its deadly flowers no but tell me more I am very interested a flower you say and he'll look like an expectant child waiting for an answer you know from his teacher okay um both of them look at thok um i just kind of wave and say um i'm i'm thok um the captain will ask you or uh, more likely she will she'll say you ah folk i sense music all around you yes ma'am can you play can you entertain oh yes Always. please please um she looks back at her uh, first mate or counselor and they will both nod, nod at, it, at each other and uh, Nethak at this point will smile, straighten his uh, shoulder and says, uh, say to you all okay, uh, obviously we have their approval now, uh, please please, come aboard I still want to hear more about this ghost, where is this ghost? I don't see any ghost and she says you little man, my eyes don't lie to me they see the truth as it is, and I see a ghost. Perhaps many ghosts surround you. We will probably learn more of it during our journey. Our first mate, uh, my first mate, and she points at the scarred woman, Saida. She might want to discuss it with you. Okay. Hi, Saida. My name is Rasko Trapelos. Nice to meet you. Um, as you all go aboard, um, I need you all to roll perception checks. Let me know how did it is. 17. 11. 23. Okay, uh, let me see. So, um... Devlin and Thok, as uh, Durana's crew kind of prepare the ship for its uh, uh, few days journey to the west, 
um, you can see that the ship is uh, while very very old and you can obviously see that uh, the, the ship has gone a few you know uh, saw a few years of travel and rough travel uh, you can see that um, all of the tools and ropes and sails and wood is in perfect condition and obviously Captain Durana keeps a, a very tidy uh, ship uh, however it's her crew seems to be composed of very very strange uh, people among them a minotaur and uh, Roscoe and um, uh, Devlin as you board the ship you can hear Saida says saying to Durana um, something of the sort um, these two they will make the journey very dangerous to us yes the water will want them. The ghost of the navigator will want them. And uh, Durana responses uh, something like, We shall see. Mm. And with that, uh, we'll finish for today. Uh, quick, one quick question, Ido. Um, yep. The shield that uh, Thok identified, anything special about it? Um, it's not magical, um, but it is obviously important to someone. Uh, at least, you know, it's it's an emblem um, of the line coaster, uh, of the line shield coaster, which is a very respectable trading company uh, up in the north. Um, so you, you think that it, it might belong to some member of this uh, trading company, maybe a high-ranking member. And as you inspect it, um, you can even find a name. Uh, Rezeeb, written uh, inside of it. Do we, do we know anything about the trading company or the name Rasid, was it, sorry? Razib. Razib. Okay. Um, no. Uh, the, uh, aside from the the fact that this trading company is uh, basically working uh, to the north of Neverwinter and Waterdeep, which is uh, north than than here, uh, you are not familiar about this company or its members. But um, the the fact that this shield is here probably tells something about the fate of this Razib, uh, and maybe someone will want to know about it. I'll ask uh, Natak about the trading company because obviously, being a merchant, he should he should know his competition as well as his possible friendly connections in the merchant trade. So, if you mentioned the shield to Natak, he definitely said that he knows uh, this co this uh, this company, and he'll say that these are usually very good, um, a good aligned. Um, organization that usually opens posts in kind of far away communities or small communities uh, while well, they operate inside large cities they kind of own the um, how should I say the mid-sized businesses among um, you know towns like Greenest and Berghost and Candlekeep um, they usually stay away out of the large com large cities I will, um, the information he tells me, I will put into, I've got a ledger. Okay. Because, I mean, no one knows about this in the party, but my character is a harper, mm -hmm. and harper's deal in information, so he's quite up on finding as much information as he can about them. Okay. Um, and he, he also says that uh, if you are interested in uh, talking to this, to someone from this uh, company, he can refer you to uh, a place in Baldur's Gate when you can uh, probably talk to a member or two of this company. Okay. So you all board the ship and uh, watch as the Minor Tower. You can you can sense that he's kind of the, um, you know, a security officer or second mate. He kind of makes sure that everyone are um, are doing what they're supposed to do. 
but surprisingly enough, there's n you know no shouting or pirate speak or or whatever. He simply looks at each of the crew uh, members and they simply jump to do whatever they're supposed to do. Um, Saida and uh, Captain Durana kind of follow you with their eyes as you go below deck, and uh, we'll continue in two weeks' time. Two weeks' time. Um, yeah, this time, I think that next week, um, if I'm not mistaken, my wife has organized something for uh, me and uh, her. So <laughs> uh, I, th I, I will make sure. And uh, if we can uh, indeed meet in one week, we'll do it. Otherwise, it's two week time and I'll, I'll uh, uh, post it in the in Discord. So uh, I'll, I'll let you know in short. OK, okay. Great. okay. No so uh, good. Good to be back. Uh, Happy New Year for all of us. And uh, yes. let's see how this uh, this uh, adventure unfolds. Okay. Well, thanks all, and I'll see you in two weeks. See you guys. Yep. Yep. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye.